Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Sometimes it's hard to recognize when to walk away. Other times, not so much. Today on our space, anything is possible when you respect yourself enough to walk away from a bad situation. Up first, OP's girlfriend shows their guest more than they bargained for. Girlfriend cheated with my best friend. Background. Me, 25 male, moved to the US from the UK seven years, dual nationality. I was dating a girl for almost two years. At first, the relationship was great, but after she moved in, she quit her job, didn't do anything to help around the house, got a DUI, and pretty much leached off me for months. Fast forward to May 2023. I was ready to kick her out at this point. She would constantly beg me not to and say how much she needed me and threaten to kill herself on a daily basis. But the problem was my childhood best friend was coming to visit for two weeks, a trip we had planned a year prior. My girlfriend agreed we'd sort everything out after he went back home so I could enjoy time with a friend I haven't seen in five years. Friend stays with us in the spare room at my house for two weeks. First week is good and all three of us had a good time. Unfortunately, I could only get one week off work, so the second week I worked while they stayed home. Red flags started appearing when they started going to the places while I was working. Places that me and my friend had planned going to like sporting events and traveling, etc. He would choose to do stuff with her over me all of a sudden and they were acting super suspicious constantly. Evidence came undeniable when I saw my girlfriend's lingerie on the floor when I came home early when I found it. They weren't home and I called him on the phone and asked him, do you want to tell me what's on with you? Because I'm not stupid. He instantly replies, have you been spying on us? That was all I needed. Girlfriend messages me saying, we're staying at my mom's for the night. We'll be back tomorrow for my stuff. You may call me petty for this, but if you could experience my emotions at that point, you would do the same. I spent the next six hours throwing out every single one of her possessions. She never cleaned her cat's litter boxes, so I shoved them in her trunk of her car at the bottom and then shoved all her clothes and items on top until her car was filled to the top. Any door you open would result in an avalanche of dirty clothes, boxes of random stuff, and cat poop. When the car was filled, the rest was thrown on the ground in a pile and got rained on. I text her one last time to tell her to grab her stuff ASAP. Do not come in the house as it will be locked. Luckily, she didn't have a key at this point. I blocked them both on pretty much everything. I left a note on her car simply saying, do not contact me ever again. I canceled her phone line and reported her phone lost and stolen so that phone or number could never be used again. I was paying for both, of course. I didn't see the reaction when they pulled up to her car the next day and I really wish I did. I was so exhausted from the night before, I slept all day. When I woke up, everything on the ground was gone but her car with all her stuff was still there. Two weeks pass and the car is there. I would laugh anytime I look at it thinking about when that car door first opens and the smell avalanche that follows. Unfortunately, I never witnessed her pick up the car. I got home from work one day and it was gone. If you're wondering how I got my revenge for the dude, he was living with his girlfriend and their kid back in the UK. I knew that he would spend every waking moment full of anxiety waiting for me to tell his girlfriend everything that happened. Some time passed, haven't talked to either of them since, and still had them blocked. All of a sudden, I'm getting messages from his friends from the UK asking me if I'm okay. Turns out this dude was bragging to all his friends about how he was screwing his best friend's girl behind his back. They all asked me for the real story since this dude couldn't get his story straight. I told them what happened. That information reached his girlfriend and he ended up getting kicked out. No one has heard from him since. As for my ex, well, I heard she moved in with her mom in some tiny room on an air mattress with her three cats that crap literally everywhere. No job, no money, and a few days before I kicked her out, she had to go to court and was handed six months probation for her DUI. As for me, most of my problems disappeared since most of them were in some way created by my ex. I did get therapy to help cope with the betrayal. It's been six months now. I finally started my own business and I can finally say I found true happiness. It really is a beautiful thing to watch karma kick in for bad people. Let's see how the community reacts to this. First up, your friend helped you get rid of her. <laughs> and he did it all while sacrificing all his other relationships. How nice of him. The OP replies, yeah, I've accepted that if that never happened, I'd probably still be with her. The original poster replied again, sometimes painful things are blessings in disguise. Think of it this way. The trash finally took itself out. How it happened isn't nearly as important as that she's finally gone. Hang in there. Go find a better woman. What kind of women are you into? The OP replies, 
Oh, I actually have a new girlfriend. It may have been too soon, but she's got exactly what I'm looking for. She's independent as F. She's structured and she's really caring. Pretty much the opposite of my ex. I've been betrayed so many times in my life now, I don't fear being cheated on anymore. If someone betrays, it's their loss that they'll lose me. Wow, I'm sorry, OP. That guy was definitely not much of a friend. Sucks that you live your entire life alongside someone only to find out you really don't know them at all. And the comments are right. Looks like you did all the work in helping her get the heck out of your life. Not sure if anyone who would want a human paperweight around, though. She was getting a free ride and totally taking advantage of your good character. Sounds like she said those threats to self-harm just so she'd have a place to stay with a free maid and an ATM. I'd say the red flags were there all along. Have you had an ex try the same with you? Share your stories with us in the comments below. Moving on, our next OP is feeling nostalgic. It gets better. The pain fades. There's more than the sadness ahead. I hope my account will let me post here. It's new and I deleted my old one. I want to talk a little bit about my own progress because I remember finding this community a little after my D-Day number one. Yeah, I've been there twice, yay for me, and it's helped me a lot. So I want to shine some hope on people as people did for me. So a few months ago, almost a year, I found out that quite a few years of a very long lasting relationship of mine were just lies and he was seeing someone else. I was crushed, devastated, and felt like I lost everything I ever built. I was expecting to get proposed to at any moment and we were looking at rings while he brought home a friend, our home, and slept with her multiple times, getting her pregnant at some point, how I found out. Back then I couldn't eat, I couldn't stop crying, I blamed myself, I thought I wasn't enough. I kept dreaming of happier days with him and woke up and started crying again because I knew these days didn't come back. I can't offer much help to reconcilers since this isn't the route I took. I have always been a subdued woman. I put others' needs on top of my own all too often, and that was the one time in my life I took a stance and said no. I tried it for a few months before reaching that conclusion, hence DD number two, <laughs> and I decided that if that man can see how hard I cried and still do this to me, then no. That was disrespectful to me, and I would not condone it, and I chose what I believed at the time to be utter loneliness. I went back to my parents' house. I felt it as a defeat. I felt like I lost all my friends. In a long-lasting relationship such as ours, all friends are mutual friends pretty much, and I assumed most of them chose him over me. I felt like I lost my home. I just couldn't bear living on it by myself. All I had was my cat and my family. And yet I lived, day after day. I ate a little bit more every week. I sought therapy. I needed sleep medication, anxiety relievers, antidepressants. I was almost hospitalized. Eventually, some friends reached out. Little by little, I had a friend group. I was eating full meals. My dreams were getting less troubling. I even met someone else, although I don't think this was a requirement for my healing. I'm writing this here because I know some people bump into this community as I did. Devastated, post D-Day, crying, thinking they were the ones who weren't enough, thinking they'll be single forever, that nothing is gonna change, that the pain is endless. The pain fades, the scars fade too, the world is full of ups and downs, and this is just indicative of good things that await you. Eat. Take care of yourself. Try to distance yourself from who hurt you for now. Breathe. Reach out. It gets better. You get back on track. And let me tell you a spoiler for your future. You're about to find out you really enjoy your company and that you're a much more interesting person than you give yourself credit for. Stronger, too. So hang in there and get there. You can reach out to me, even, if you feel like this will help. It gets better. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, OP. I think cheaters legitimately don't care that they hurt the ones they love. If they did, they wouldn't cheat in the first place. And so when the people who are being cheated on show emotion and cry in front of them, they go cold and don't care because A, they don't know how to react to such emotions because they believe they didn't do anything wrong, and B, they literally don't care because they're selfish beings who just need to get their rocks off by any means. So that's why sometimes it might be a mistake trying to go back and make things work. Update about feeling unlovable after being cheated on. One of my main feelings when I was cheated on was that I was now older, uglier, and lost my chance at love. I had wasted my teens on someone, gained some weight, some stretch marks showed on my belly, and I was feeling completely unlovable. And that desperation was used as fuel by my cheater, who weaponized it as ways to convince me to stay. He was the one who would think I was beautiful even in this body. 
He was the only one who would deal with my chaotic habits, with my mess, with my laziness. With him gone, I'd never find love again. I found an article, Dear Chump Lady, Will Anyone Ever Love Me With Stretch Marks? And it was a lady seeking support from finding out she was cheated on right after giving birth. She sounded so vulnerable, and one of her main concerns was how she had stretch marks, and no one would love her body anymore, and the one advising her kept repeating, they fade, they fade. While I wasn't pregnant myself, something about the phrase, they fade, rung with me. My own stretch marks have faded, and I found love again, so now I know I'm not unlovable. But one thing I learned was harsh. I desperately needed to be kinder to myself. When we talk about loving ourselves, I used to think this was just looking at the mirror and thinking I was hot. That sounded unachievable, so I never even tried. After therapy, after taking care of myself, and after seeing so many people in similar situations being so harsh on themselves and wishing they were kinder to themselves, it rung me. Self-esteem, loving yourself, these things start small. Respecting your boundaries is loving yourself. Looking at your interests and seeing how your hobbies and the things you love and do make you a unique person is loving yourself. Looking at your flaws and knowing that they're either just a part of your body functioning, stretch marks are there just to indicate growth, and they fade, they fade. That your scars are part of your journey, and that while you aged, a lot of people are aged around you too. You're not the only one who's single. You're not the only one who's been hurt. You're not the only one who is sad. These insecurities fade. A big part of my journey was learning that I was not unlovable. I just forgot how to love myself along the way. And once I learned how to do that, I found love again from others around me, and this time able to enforce my boundaries, able to know I will not be destroyed if I need to leave, because I like who I am and I can be alone if I need to. Insecurities, manipulation, pain, scars, stretch marks, these things fade. Finding yourself after deep trauma is hard. Once you get there, you're a force to be reckoned with. I'm so sorry your ex said those horrible things to you, but you're absolutely right. You are not unlovable. Seeking self-love is the ultimate form of true love. It's been said before, but the only way we can let someone love us is by truly loving ourselves first. Thank you for your wise words. Update. An annoying but useful habit. I've been apart from a cheater for a long time now. In a new relationship, all that, I like to linger here still to try and give advice I wish I had received and show positive sides to surviving these times, especially for those who chose my route, which is separation. That being said, I've been having some thoughts I think this community will understand more than anyone in my personal life could. I feel now that I was very naive before. While I didn't develop trust issues and no trauma has visibly seeped and is damaging my current relationship with a new person, I see some of it in myself. I keep finding myself making plans all the time. I was just in the shower and my mind went, what if your life falls apart again right now? I'm currently very much in touch with a healthy support system. I know what I would do if it did. If the new guy ever did turn my life upside down like the last one did, damage would be much more controlled. I would be sad, but I have plans. I wouldn't sit idle or anything. So in a way, these thoughts reassure me. I am more than my relationship. I have other things to look forward to in life. I have more to do. But on the other hand, it's so frustrating to always think of plans and always try to be prepared. I think it's a form of anxiety. It eats me up a bit. It's not debilitating and it doesn't seep into toxic behaviors in my relationships. But I wish I could enjoy the moment without convincing myself over and over that I'll be fine if it ends in tragedy again. I think you're right. It is a form of anxiety. And I think also it's very much a trauma response. Update. D-Day anniversary became a celebration for me to myself. Hello everyone. If you follow my post and comment history, you'll probably be able to see that I have come a long way from a lot of pain and I'm doing much better nowadays. So I'd like to talk about reclaiming D-Days. What are your thoughts? At first, I thought even thinking about it was bad, but nowadays I see nothing wrong with acknowledging it. It marks the day a massive change in my life was set to motion that in a way made me into a pain cocoon from which I emerged a better person. As such, I started celebrating my D-Days alone, silently. I usually dine out with myself, buy something nice to myself, or just pamper myself in some way. I make it a point not to invite anyone because to me, it marks the day I started choosing myself. I see a lot of people reflect in these days in a painful matter, but making it a celebration of my new life and to me starting to put myself first made at an event, I actually like. So I thought maybe I could share to see if anyone does the same. If you all hate the idea, <laughs> 
or if it helps someone. Grief is funny in a way that it always returns when we least expect it. Grief isn't linear just as the healing experience isn't linear. And I think the same can be said for experiencing toxic relationships like this. It's perfectly healthy to revisit the past while trying to move forward. After all, our past shapes our present and helps us identify who we are and where we are headed. So it's natural to use our past experiences as a point of reference for our current situation. What do you make of all this? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining us today on our space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.